Ahem. What's going on, YouTube? Eric Bauer, back again. A short wait between videos. The last thing I uploaded was my contest entry for the Grown Man Record Night 600 subs contest. It's great to see that they have not just surpassed 600, but 700, encroaching 8 the last time I checked. Great show. Loved doing the entry. Not so many people watched it um, or even engaged with that video. And that's a trend I've been noticing, looking at my analytics. No, it's just boring speak for me, whining about nobody watching my videos. But I don't give a fuck. I'm here to do these for my own entertainment. And hopefully my audience gets something out of them as well. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, you probably already guessed what it is based off of the title because it's pretty obvious. And I'm not one for a lot of subtlety. Um, not going to show any records, not going to show any tapes. It's going to be a CD only update today. And it's not even an update, it's a spotlight. And what got me thinking about this was a package of VCLT I received not too long ago from uh, Pat over at Ground Zero Salem. Uh, currently Boston, soon to be North Carolina. Fucking dude's making moves. Anyway, Pat, out of the kindness of his heart, uh, because he rules, sent me some shit in the mail. And a couple of things he sent were CDs. Now, one of them is this Blitz Punk Collector's Series on Anagram Records. Uh, basically, every great Blitz song, uh, dare I say every great Blitz song, because there's more great Blitz songs than what are just on this CD. The CD contains some killer material of basically what I think anybody would consider the essential Blitz stuff. Um, and then he also sent Chaos UK, the singles, also an Anagram Records CD compilation. All of the great singles from Chaos UK back in the day, uh, just compiling some old stuff on CD. And it made me realize that I really love these collection CDs, um, especially when they're done really well. Now there's one label in particular that I happen to collect um, specifically uh, that puts out really great comps as well as reissues of old classics uh, with added benefit of, of really great liner notes, uh, extra tracks, um, and it's a CD, so I don't care about the extra tracks. Uh, usually these go in the car with me, but I do rock them here at home. Um, Captain Oi. Now, they do release vinyl, uh, just not nearly as much as what they put out on CD, and they've been around for quite some time. It's a label that I believe was started by, and I don't remember his name, but he's one of the primary dudes from the band the business classic uk 82 oi uh whatever you want to call it working class skinhead anthem writers uh anti-fascist killer band um so he started this label called captain oi and what a great fucking label man uh they've got a ton of releases uh my collection contains a fraction of what they put out. Um, and I only pulled 10 to talk about. And I'm not going to have a lot of in-depth shit to say about most of these. Um, I am going to show them in order of release, uh, which isn't in order of when the actual albums were released, just in order of when Captain Oi released these albums. Now, these are all contenders for seminal punk records from the 70s and the 80s, uh, varying pretty wildly in musical styles so we're gonna we're just gonna jump right into it we're gonna get started a sap uh, before I lose track of what the fuck I want to say about all of these uh, items I'm about to show you so we're gonna start off with Ahoy 8 this is the eighth release from Captain Oi and that is four skins a fistful of four skins got the Captain Oi down the side. Now this does contain the entirety of A Fistful of Foreskins. Uh, it also contains a few demo tracks as bonuses. Um, it is a great fucking representation of this record. 
uh, released, I want to say like 82, 83. Um, let's see if we can determine. See, I didn't do any homework for this. I just pulled shit. Um, so 1993, Captain Oi release. And uh, you know what? Doesn't say the release date for the album itself. But I'm going to go with 82 or 83. Um, 84 would be pushing it. It is a great, great record, as you saw already. Back of the J card. J card. I'm not talking about a cassette here. I'm talking about a CD. Back of the insert, the inlay. There's the band. And then you've just got lyrics. More lyrics. Another photo of the band. All the lyrics. What a great record. This is probably one of my favorite UK82 style OI records of all time. It's working class. It's anti-fascist, like the best of this stuff is. Um, it is brutal. It's catchy. It's melodic. It's not, I wouldn't say it's poppy because it's shit that you could get into a bar fight to. Um, Foreskins just great uh, i think it's their second album um i would love to pick up the captain away version of the first album uh i don't have it uh vinyl it's a different story we're not talking about vinyl today we are talking about these classics so the next one is ahoy 34 the 34th release from captain away the ejected with their uh spirit of rebellion record there is the back uh, originally released, again, I'm going to shoot for somewhere between 81, 83, uh, put out by Riot City, which most of these were originally Riot City or No Future uh, bands. Um, at any rate, the ejected is the inside. Um, I don't usually get real, like, stoked about CD packaging because usually uh, people who put out CDs just kind of half-ass uh, the packaging that they do. Um, in this case, Captain Oi, again, they just really nail it. Um, you've got ejected EPs detailed there. Original back of the vinyl. Some liner notes and some lyrics. Uh, still pretty basic. This is kind of still early on in the Captain Oi uh, discography uh, released by Captain Oi in 1995. Um, Ejected, similar to Foreskins. Uh, you definitely have that UK82 street punk, oi sort of sound. But they also are informed heavily by uh, the first two Clash records or uh, the early angelic upstarts before they went a little new wave. Um, so you get hints of like reggae in there, but it's not obnoxious, which um, a lot of bands who toyed with those sounds uh, kind of ended up teetering into obnoxious territory. Um, and here, it uh, just seems sincere. It's great. Um, and it flows really well with the very, very just militaristic uh, ant antagonizing... What's... Jesus. Eric can't talk tonight. Sorry, you'll have to come back later. Uh, antagonistic nature of the rest of this album. Um, it's just great. You've got... Uh, bonus tracks from one of the EPs on here, as well as, you know, all the regular tracks from the full album. One of the bonus tracks is, is actually a great cover of Generation Landslide by Alice Cooper. Um, I never thought I'd say that before. Uh, a great cover of Generation Landslide by Alice Cooper by a fucking street punk band. Uh, if you can't tell, very anti-fascist, um, which is a selling point for me, obviously. I don't hide my politics here on the High Defamation Channel. I flaunt them, which maybe has turned some of you away. In which case, fuck you. It's better off without you. Now I'm being antagonistic. Anyway, moving on to the next album. This would be Ahoy 89. And I'm talking about Splodge. Yes, Splodge with uh, his In Search of the Seven Golden Gussets. Look at that cover. Uh, if you want to know what this CD sounds like, what this record sounds like, it sounds like this cover. Um, 
This was released by Captain Oi in 1998. Record originally came out. Uh, let's see if this one will tell me. Really looking for these release dates on this on this shit here. And we're not we're not finding anything. I'm gonna go 82, maybe 83. Um, it might say inside here. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. 82. You got liner notes? That's where I found out that information. EP covers there. There's the band. Splotch, also known as Splodgeness Abounds. Um, <laughs> I checked this out. Uh, this is actually a fairly new acquisition for the Captain Oi collection. I checked this out initially um, because uh, my local record shop happened to get in um, a bunch of these that I probably will end up going back and buying more uh, of these Captain Oi uh, releases that they have there. I'm not going to tell you the name of it because if you're local, I don't want you going there and getting them before me. So I, I saw this. I didn't pick it up. I checked it out, though, and um, it's goofy. Um, they are considered to be part of the uh, punk pathetic uh, genre of uh, UK punk. Um, it was a regional sound, if I'm not mistaken, uh, generally uh, espoused by bands like Splodge, also uh, Toy Dolls, Peter and the Test Tube Babies, uh, The Addicts, um, just goofy shit, non-political um, <laughs> pretty politically incorrect uh, there's a lot of skits like monty python-esque type skits on these albums they play around with country on this uh probably one of my favorite tracks is uh tough shit wilson <laughs> fucking great great track um sloosh along a max <laughs> another great one uh, a very unfunny comedian pilchard freak i mean this is a, it's a like i said it's goofy but it's a fun fucking record. Um, when they fucking rip, they rip. Uh, just killer punk when they get into that driving, just fists up, drinks hoisted, uh, fucking raunchiness. Raunchiness. It's a good term for this album. It's raunchy. Um, splodge. It's great. Check it out. Next one we're going to talk about is Ahoy 91. And that is... The first Chelsea record. Again, you got the Captain Oi down the side, as they all do. Chelsea. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the band Chelsea, uh, they uh, basically ended up becoming Generation X. Uh, well, some of them ended up going on to Generation X, including Billy Idol, uh, who started off in Chelsea. Um, a really great 70s UK punk band still kind of embracing that glammy sound um, that you hear that definite Sex Pistols um, influence along with a lot of the American punk that was happening at the time like the glam shit like um, New York Dolls and uh, Dead Boys and Heartbreakers to a certain degree um, it is not as um, new wavy as Generation X um, and certainly not as uh, new wavy as Billy Idol once he left Generation X and uh, took on Steve Stevens and just started doing his own shit. Um, as the case is with all of the Captain Oi releases, you've got more details about other albums by the band, as well as very extensive liner notes and photos. It's just a great portrait of a place and time um, you know, they don't make punk rock like this anymore. Um, and if they do, I'm not hearing it. So point me in the right direction. Um, but honestly, I'd rather go back to these old releases anyway. Maybe that's the old codger in me. I don't know. This album is great though. Chelsea, definitely check it out. Just the, the start off track, I'm on fire, is just a raging punk number. And it basically tells you exactly what you can expect with the rest of the record. It's, it's, it's fucking great. Now, next one we're going to talk about is Ahoy 123. That is Vice Squad, The Rarities, from uh, 1979 to 1985. 
love Vice Squad. Um, pictures of Vice Squad is probably where I first saw um, Motorhead being repped by other bands. Um, I've been listening to Vice Squad for a very long time. I've probably been listening to Vice Squad for as long as I've been a serious fan of music. Um, now this is, so, see, this is the other thing. Some of these Captain Oi releases are rare. Um, if you want an example, go ahead and look up the uh, Captain Oi re release of Cockney Rejects Greatest Hits Volume 1. Um, it's, it's kind of absurd for a CD. Uh, when you can get the, a, a repress of the record for um, cheaper, it's, uh, it blows my mind a little bit. At any rate, Vice Squad, huge favorite of mine. Um, as I said, been listening to them probably for as long as I've been a serious fan of music, punk rock especially. Uh, you've got a cool picture of the band behind the CD. If you're not familiar with Vice Squad, they were a street punk band started in 1979 under um, a different name. I can't think of that name. It was like Sex Maniacs or something like that. Sex Toys or Sex Aids. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you've got cool photos, uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a timeline of the band Vice Squad here inside this insert, as well as more extensive liner notes. Fronted by the inimitable Becky Bondage. <laughs> kind of had a bit of a had a bit of a crush on Becky Bondage back in the day. Not gonna lie. Uh, between her and uh, singer for uh, Tex and the Horseheads and uh, singer for 45 Grave, uh, I had a pretty wild imagination back in those days. Uh, Vice Squad, at any rate, just killer post-apocalyptic sounding street punk, very just militaristic, driving, um, martial punk rock. Not like anarcho-punk. Uh, it's definitely just like street rock sort of vibe to this. Um, just a great, great collection of all of the rare Vice Squad shit. This has um, most of their early EPs starting in 79, going up to 84. Um, just awesome. It's a great place to start if you're unfamiliar with Vice Squad, but it's, this is one of the harder to find Captain Oi reissues. I'm sure there's wax version of that out there somewhere. Um, if you're one of those vinyl only stuck up. I don't know, CDs get a bad rap in the VC. You know what, I just like music. I'll, I'll take it on vinyl, I'll take it on CD, I'll take it on tape. I won't go so far as 8-track or reel-to-reel -reel, uh, because that shit can get expensive. Next up, Ahoy number 148 is Separates by 999. The 999 are a little bit different from what we've already looked at. Uh, this was originally released in... Uh, 79, if I'm not mistaken, 78, actually, and was a 2000 Captain Oi release. Um, man, these guys kind of mixed that, like, glammy, like, garagey, um, sort of uh, early punk sound of, like, Chelsea, or um, these guys were on the same label as the Stranglers, so there's definitely, you'll hear an influence uh, from them. Uh, there's United Artists, there's the uh, interior of the collection. Uh, and, you know, you got another band shot. Oh, that's glare. They, they, they were spiffy dressers, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> the first time I saw anything to do with, with these guys, uh, I, I mean, t tell me that doesn't look like a boy band from, like, the 90s. <laughs> um, this, honestly, this reminds me a lot of the first Nervous Eaters record. Um, it's just very driving. It doesn't get super fast. Um, but it is gritty. It's not extra polished. Um, it's got that new wave sort of sound to it on top of uh, just like the raucous rock that's on here. Um, opening track Homicide is probably to date my favorite 999 track. It's killer. You're going to hear it if you watch this video. Uh, you got lyrics in here. You got some liner notes, more band shots. These guys were photogenic, not going to lie. 
Now, if I looked like them, I would probably have my picture taken all the time as well. Um, a lot of people kind of complain about this record, um, and they point to the track Feeling All Right with the Crew as being um, a track that kind of lets down the entire record. Now, I avidly digress with that sentiment. Feeling All Right with the Crew is a weird, kind of experimental, slow, dirgy track, and I love it. I love how it kind of breaks up the first half of this album from the second half, and then they just dive right back into rocking after that after that tune. It fucking rules. Uh, 999. Can't recommend them highly enough. they got several other releases, uh, full lengths, etc. All worth your time. Next up, this is probably, full disclosure, this is probably my favorite of the bunch. And we are talking about Ahoy 197. Peter and the Test Tube Babies. Oh yeah. The mating sounds of South American tree frogs. Let me get that, let me get that out so there's no glare. Uh, because that cover is one of my favorite punk covers of all time. There, you, there we go. There's the cover. Some humping frogs. That's what you get on this cover. There's the back. That will be the back cover of the LP. This one is chock full of stuff. Information. Liner notes. You've got, you know, lyrics. You've got cool photos and scraps and memorabilia in here. Uh, more lyrics. Am I flashing this stuff too fast? Also available releases from Captain Oi, Peter and the Test Two Babies. Um, these guys came from the same scene as Splodge, as the Toy Dolls, as the Addicts. Um, this is an album. Oh, this is another one. This is another favorite part of this record. Um, now, picture that 12 by 12. Get the band as frogs. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the same artist that did uh, some artwork for the Sex Pistols. Um, this band rules. Uh, the first album before this was All Live. Um, recorded at various shows uh, prior to its release. That's a great record. It's a really good blueprint for what Peter and the Test Tube Babies would become. This album is just driving UK82 uh with almost a post-punk vibe to it, you definitely hear callbacks to um, some Joy Division on here, uh, early Joy Division Warsaw type stuff. Uh, real haunting melodies played in the background while the guitars just rage. Um, vocally, dude is snotty, snarly. Uh, it just rules. Uh, the the start-off track guest list, uh, real cheeky, uh, tongue-in-cheek, stuff and it just continues from there uh the jinx blown out again wimpies pissed punks go for it never made it uh, uh, every every cut on here is good there's no bad songs on this album uh perfect record honestly great stuff and a great captain oi release probably like i said my favorite of the captain oi retrospectives the moving on ahoy 241 we've got Pure Mania by the Vibrators. Of course, Captain Noy down the side. Classic Vibrators Pure Mania cover. There's the back. A lot of bonuses on here. Uh, mostly live. Um, what to say about the Vibrators intelligently that hasn't already been said? Interior. First of all, they look cool as fuck. Look at his fucking leopard print pants. Man. If I were alive back then, that's what I'd want to look like, these guys. Right there. This album is, it's essential. It is one of those punk records that, you know, I don't care how advanced you are in what you're listening to, like, or how long you've been listening to punk rock. This is one of those timeless records that anyone who calls themselves a punker or somebody who appreciates punk rock and isn't a child uh, about having to be super brutal, super raw. You know, I only listen to fucking spiky jacket punk or I only listen to chain punk. Um, get, get the fuck out of here. Um, this stuff is crucial still 
I've talked about the vibrators before when I talked about the band Troops of Tomorrow, because that's basically the vibrators. Uh, now, this stuff came out in, I want to say, 76, 77, uh, right around the same time as Nevermind the Box. Now, is it as raucous as Nevermind the Box? No, it's a little more focused. It's a little less off the rails. Um, you got liner notes in here. Killer shit. You got lyrics. More lyrics. Lyrics? Lurks. You got lurks. I already flashed that. You got more vibrator shit right here. Um, and then, you, you know, more. Even more. Um, you can compare them to the early Sex Pistols stuff. Uh, meets like the first couple Ramones records. Uh, but the vibrators were really kind of like their own entity. They weren't original sounding even then. Um, but they were earnest and they were really really stoked about what they were doing on this record it is just an energetic blast of punk rock and roll and i love this record um it's, like i said it's not my favorite of these captain away reissues but it's up there it's probably right below that peter and the test tube babies um this album is just phenomenal it's one of those records that i want on cd i want it on tape i want it on wax um, and I buy reissues of and give away uh, to people who have not been fortunate enough to be blessed with hearing this fucking record. Just get into it. Check it out. Please, for the love of fucking Satan. Anyhow. Ahoy, 275. The Destructors with uh, their exercise of Demons of Youth. Here, check out that record cover again. Now, the Destructors came from a similar scene as the rest of these, probably most easily compared to the uh, Ejected or uh, the Vice Squad, um, in that uh, it's more street punk, less oi. Um, but the Destructors also uh, were a little bit into that anarcho punk scene uh, at the time, occupied by bands like. Flux of Pink Indians and Crass and Icons of Filth um, and that type of shit. Maybe comparable to that Foreskins. Um, this is a great record, man. Uh, it, it's funny, too. The, the uh, insert, again, doesn't skimp on the cool shit. You got lyrics and photos. You got the whole intro here by Alan Adams, written in 2005. You've got on the back a statement written by one Genesis P. Orange from London in 1981. And that's kind of weird. Um, it's called The Destructors Kill Music, and it's basically a poem. Some uh, freeform, random uh, thoughts from Genesis, um, who is obviously Psychic TV, uh, another guy from Psychic TV was actually in the band um, Urban Menace, featuring ex-UK uh, subs uh, folks, including uh, Charlie Parker. Um, but that's that's beside the point. So, um, and then of course you know you have dude from uh, Death in June was playing anarcho punk before he started Death in June and went down the that uh, weird sketchy like fascist route. Um, you know, and people can say, oh, he just does it for shock value. Um, newsflash, doing it just for shock value still isn't really that cool. Um, so, you know, these guys, Defenders, I'm not one of them, but Crisis is cool shit. And that can be compared to this early Destructors stuff. And I know the main guy of the Destructors, I can't think of his name. He's come out, post, post this album saying uh, it's his least favorite of the Destructors material. They had a lot of EPs, a couple other full lengths, um, one or two other collections on Captain Oi. And um, this is really, really solid, driving, street level anarcho punk. Um, there's a track about Jack the Ripper on here. I mean, come on. It's great. It's great stuff. The Northern Ripper. Catchy. Stuff will be in your head for fucking days if you listen to it. Now, got one more left. The last one we're going to look at. And 
I think the most recent of what I own on this label, I would have to go back to the shelf to verify that because I've got four or five, six other ones floating around um, over there. This is Massacred Melodies, Major Accident, Ahoy 281, if I didn't already mention that. This is the back. Major Accident, uh, originally, uh, I think they were originally known as Major Accident. They became the band known as Accident, uh, who basically you know, kept the same aesthetic. Uh, Major Accident uh, were, uh, <laughs> if you can't tell, kind of obsessed with like Clockwork Orange and uh, that whole Droog look. Uh, you got a photo collage, really great stuff. Uh, lyrics, of course, liner notes in the front and flyer in the back there. Uh, these guys are just great, poppy, catchy, driving, martial, punk rock. Same vein as the first couple Addicts records. Um, I could compare it to like uh, Shock Troops by Cox Bar to a certain degree. I don't think that's a far-fetched comparison. Um, really great band. Uh, they got like two or three other records full lengths under the major accident name and then uh, one or two records under the name accident and everything they've done is really consistent with uh, this album uh, fucking just a great great time and another great release from Captain Oi and um, that's it that's my 10 that's my 10 anyway uh, 10 releases from Captain Away Records, uh, a label that I have not really seen shown here in the VC uh, that I think is really great. Uh, one, again, that I collect and will generally buy anything that is released on it if I don't already own it. Um, that said, it's that time. I'm out of here. Y'all take it easy. Stay healthy. And, you know, as I always say, don't be fucking shitty. Later, YouTube.